complete. Amen. Are you ready to connect with your miracle? I am. Amen. Good to see everyone of us in the house of God this morning. Amen. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We worship you. We magnify your name. We thank you for guarding us to yourself. Unto you is the gathering of your people. We are asking, oh God, that in this few minutes, as we look into your word, that you will speak to our hearts. Yes, you will strengthen us out of Zion. Amen. Empower us, equip us, meet our needs, transform every situation. Let no one remain the same. Amen. Heal the sick, deliver the oppressed. Set the captives free. Make the poor rich and make the rich richer and glorify the name of Jesus. We take authority over all satanic plans and maneuvers in the name of Jesus Christ and release the Spirit of God to have His way. Amen. In Jesus name. Mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. One more time, welcome to church. There is a miracle with your name on it. Give the Lord a big, big clap offering. Amen. 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 Okay, praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Well, welcome everybody on Zoom. I think they're doing an update, so we can't go live on Facebook today. So we're going to enjoy ourselves. We're going to be able to get it out somehow after the service. Okay? Amen. Um, but God has a word for us. We are in a very powerful season. God is equipping us with power, uh, power to get more and to accomplish more in our lives. Amen. Somebody said, this is my month. This is my month. To be empowered. To be empowered. To get more. To get more. And to accomplish much more. And to accomplish much more. In my life. In my life. Amen. The truth is that God wants us to get more and God wants us to accomplish much more. So we're going to look at today on how to be full of power to get more and to get things done and to accomplish much more. Amen. How to be full of power. The question is why do we need power? Or why should I be full of power? You need power to get wealth. You need power to become healthy. You need power to get prosperity. You need power to become successful. You need power for everything. In fact, you need power to accomplish your dreams and your goals. Amen. You need power to subdue your enemies, Amen. oppositions and barriers that want to stand in your path of victory and success. You need power to subdue them. The Bible says in Psalm 66 and verse number 3, it says, through the greatness of your power shall your enemies submit themselves to you. Your enemies will not submit until there is a release of great power into your life and to your situation. And God wants to give you great power so it can subdue Opposition, you can subdue your enemies, Amen. and I see that power coming upon you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said, Power will come to subdue your enemies, power to outlast your challenges. Amen. You also need power to rule in the midst of opposition. Mm -hmm. It takes power to rule. You know, you have dreams, but there are forces that want to hinder your dreams. Stop God's plan for your life. You know, don't forces that don't want you to be what you desire to be and to accomplish what you want to accomplish. But you need power to subdue them. In Psalm 1110 verse number 3, uh, it says, uh, rule thou in the midst of your enemies. That's Psalm 110 verse 3. It says, yeah, look at it there. It says, um, the people shall be willing what? In the day of what? Your power. Look at, is it verse 2? 110 verse 2. Yeah. It says what? The Lord sent the rod of his strength out of us and said, Rule thou in the midst what, of your enemies, in the midst of challenges, in the midst of opposition. You need power mm. to rule and to reign. Amen? Amen? In the midst of difficult situations, you know, there will always be difficult situations in life. There will always be challenges. There will always be storms mm. of life. But you need power. Jesus was going on a mission that was important to him, and the storms arose. But Jesus still ruled in the midst of the storm. Amen. Some people can survive the storm, but you will rule in the midst of the storms of life in the name of Jesus Christ. You also need power to be exempted from the common evil that is among all people. There are common evils that is you know that happen to all people, but you need power to be exempted. In Ecclesiastes chapter number 6, 
verse 1 and 2. The Bible says there is an evil I have seen under the sun. And it is common among men. You see that? An evil that is common among people. What is that evil? It said, a man to whom God has given riches and wealth and honor, so that he wanted nothing for his soul of all he desired. Yet God given him no power to eat thereof, but a stranger eateth it. It said, it is vanity and it is an evil disease. You know, you need to be delivered from this common evil. What does this mean? What does this scripture say? It says, it means that there are riches all around us. There are wealth all around us. There are, there are uh, honor is available all around you. You can have all that your soul desire in life. Anything your soul desire is available. The riches you desire, all that your soul desire is available all around you. But if you don't currently have it right now, it's because you don't have the power to get it. It's not that it is not available. So that's a common evil that wealth and riches are available. Anything you desire is around you, but you just need power to be able to get it. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. If you need a house, a house is available. Amen. You need a car, a car is available. Amen. You need a job, a jobs are available amen. everywhere around you. Yes, but you need power to get it. Amen. You need power to get it. And God is the one that gives power to get. Amen. And I pray and I prophesy that you will receive power so that you can be exempted from this common evil Amen. that is common to all men. Where you people see riches and they can't be rich. They see honor. People enjoy honor, but they can't partake of the honor. They see wealth and they can't enter into it or they can't, you know, walk in it. But, but it is available. So there is a, that's an evil, that's a common evil. But you need power to be exempted from such common evil and you'll be exempted in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I say you'll be exempted in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. So you need power, you know, uh, to get what your soul desire. That look at that scripture, very powerful. It says so that he wanted nothing of all that his soul desired. All that is everything your soul desire you can acquire. Amen. When there is enough power to get it, amen. when you have power to get it, you have power to eat it. Amen. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. So, so if it is finances, you need financial power to be to be. Uh, to be financially in command. You need financial power. If it is something that requires reasoning, you need mental power. Yeah, mental power to be able to, you know, reign where thoughts have dominion. If it is something that requires physical strength, you need physical power. So I'm just trying to get you to see that power is an essential uh in everybody's life. When we're talking about power, we're talking about ability. We're talking about capacity. We're talking about you having capability, you know, in your life. We're talking about, you know, authority and influence. That's your potentiality, ability to attain great things. This day, I see God filling you with power in the name of Jesus Christ. I say, I see God filling you with power so that you not only hear of riches, but you will taste it. You will yes. live in it. Yes. I say you will live in it. You not only hear of honor, but you'll be honored. Yes. You'll be celebrated. You will not only hear of you know wealth, but you will swim in it. Amen. Oh, I didn't hear your believing amen. You will swim in wealth in the name of Jesus Christ. So we all need to be empowered to be full of power. That's why God has been showing us different means of empowerment we have talked about. We have talked about how you can generate power, number one, through prayer. Remember that? How you can generate power through fasting. And how you can generate power through the word of God. Through what? The word of God. Yes. So today we are going to look at another means by which you can generate, uh, you can be filled with the power of God. And the good news I want to tell you is that, you know, all this different means are essential, they are important for our lives. 
you know, um, to be, to, for you to apply them in, in your life, Amen. you know, to be successful, for you to be enriched, for you to be prosperous, to become all that God wants you to be, you need to engage these different means of power. Amen. You know, if you have ever seen a, a jet plane, or if you have ever flown it in a plane, a plane is usually, you know, uh, designed with multiple engines. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if one engine fail, you can switch to the other engine so that the, the, the plane, when it decides to get to its destination, it has power and power reservoir. Even boats mm -hmm. or ship, they have reservoir power. You know, they have multiple engines you know, that power the boat or the ship, you know, so that in case they are the high sea and something, you know, happened to one, they move to the other engine. Sometimes they want to increase their efficiency, they power all the engines. So something something different happened, it explodes <laughs> because all engines working. And that's what God wants our life to be like, so that we can be prosperous, successful, we need to have this different means by which power is flowing into our lives. Amen. May power begin to flow into Amen. your life. I say may power begin to flow into your life. When you pray, may power be released. Amen. When you fast, may power be released. Amen. When you speak God's word, may power be released into your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And this thing, all these means, they are very important and they are also interconnected. The Bible says through prayer, Watch this. The, the, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person makes tremendous power available and it is dynamic in all its working. Somebody say dynamic in all its working. Dynamic in all its working. But your prayer also needs to be enhanced by fasting. Yeah. Yeah. Even as powerful as prayer is, fasting enhances our prayer. That's why, you know, I said to us, I said, your prayer is like an arrow. Fasting is like a bow that tensions the arrow to make it go further, faster, faster and with great speed. Hello, somebody. In fact, Jesus said, some things will not happen except you combine prayer and fasting. Amen. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. And also, even though your prayer and fasting are effective, it is the word of God that sponsors our prayer. Because when you are praying, what you do is you take words to God. You take words to God. The content of your word determines the potency of your prayer. Yes, sir. The content. You know, many people pray, but their prayer has no content. So it has no power. Mm -hmm. It has no relevant word. You need to have relevant word for relevant Prayer, so that your prayer can be potent, can have content in it. You know, some people use uh, the wrong <laughs> or less content for their prayer. You know, the Bible says in Hosea chapter number 4 verse 2, it says, take words and come to me. You have to take word. You have to have God's word to bring God, you know, to make God to respond to you. You have to have God's word. You know, Hosea chapter number 14 and verse number 12 Take words. Is it 12 or 2? Yeah, take words. We'll say 14, 12. 14. Yeah, we are in 4. Yeah. That's the problem. I think it's actually supposed to be 14, 2. Yeah. What? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, take words and come to me. Uh, did you see that? He said, what? Take with you what? Words. And turn to the Lord. Yeah, I say, God say, come, let us reason together. Bring your strong reason. Come and tell me why I should bless you. Come and tell me why I should fill you with power. So you, we need to take one. You know, it's not just prayer. It's not just uh, it's crying. God, God has his different ways. But essentially, God is a judge. It's a righteous judge. So you have to take words like you are going to uh, present your case. To God, yes, so you yes. need to take relevant words wow. that will cause God to answer to you. That's why in Luke 18, Jesus gave the parable of you don't have to talk to it. Give a parable of a widow. We say he said, and a judge in that city. He was talking about prayer. He didn't say a doctor. He didn't say because you can go to your doctor and be crying and you have to move. But the judge needs you to give him, you know, 
preaching and you have to quote something and say, this is what, why you should give me my verdict. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you see, all these are working together. Mm. That's the point. That, so that you don't, you need all of this power. So don't say, oh, I just want to get the word. Okay, if you have the word, you, you need it in prayer. Or I want to pray. What are you going to be praying without the word? Some people pray out of uh, point, and I don't. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to think of a way when somebody can go to God and say something, and it's not relevant to what. Um, you are believing God for a miracle, and I say, He that finally the wife, finally the good thing. Said, how hard does God to do it? <laughs> you are believing God for uh, favor. <laughs> you I mean, you are believing God for a miracle. If you need favor, you can use that prayer for favor. So, but people use different words, and I can't just, you know, put it together. But if you hear some people's prayer, you will just be amazed mm. and wonder why God, why their prayer has no answer because there's no content, there's no relevant content. The the prayer has no word. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. But this morning today, we want to look at another means of empowerment to get and to accomplish. Much more. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Micah chapter number 3 verse 8. Micah chapter 3 verse 8. The word of God says, Micah the speaking there says, But truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Wow. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. So, the hope, so by the Spirit of God. We can be full of power. Mm. So the Holy Spirit is the source of true power. Truly, if you want true power, you need the Holy Spirit. Truly, I am full of power by what? The Spirit of the Lord. So the Holy Spirit can fill you with power to get and to accomplish much more. Amen. The Holy Spirit can fill us with power to get and to accomplish much more. The Holy Spirit power can help you to get things done. Mm. Truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of God. Let me say something here. The Holy Spirit is not power. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit can fill you with power. The Holy Spirit is not power, but the Holy Spirit is an embodiment of power. Glory be to God. The Holy Spirit is always associated with power, but he is not power. The Holy Spirit is a person. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. Is the third person of the Godhead. We have God the Father, we have God the Son, and we have God the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is the means through which the power of God is distributed. The Holy Spirit is the mystery the power of God is released into our lives. But the Holy Spirit is not power. Mm -hmm. The power of God flows through the Holy Spirit. Hello, somebody. Amen. You know, yes, because somebody said, I have the Holy Spirit, uh, but I do I need power once I have the Holy Spirit? You, I'm going to find out why you need power, you know, because the Holy Spirit is not power. The Holy Spirit is God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. But once you want power, the Holy Spirit will fill you with power. I hope you're getting that. Yeah. In Acts 10, 38, the Bible says, How God anointed Jesus Christ with Holy Ghost and power. You see that? With Holy Ghost and with power. He didn't say anointed him with power. He anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with what? Power. We went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, not just power. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. In fact, the anointing means the, uh, the, the, the power of God. The, that's what the anointing means. The anointing is the power of God. The release of the power of God is the anointing. And it is done through the Holy Spirit. And Jesus wanted to get things done. He went about doing good. You see, what he wanted to do required empowerment. You want to do some things in your life. You need power to be able to get things done. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. So the Holy Spirit will empower you to be able to get things done. 
and I see that power coming upon your life Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We also see something in Luke. The Bible says in Luke chapter 1, verse 27, uh, Mary, the angel appeared to Mary and came to tell her that, look, an impossible thing is about to happen in her life. She's about to to give birth to a son, even though she was a virgin. That was an impossible task, so to say, for a virgin to give birth. How many of you agree that that's an impossible task? It's a difficult task. And then Mary screamed and said, how can this thing happen? Then the angel said to her, the impossible can become possible, but this is how it's going to happen. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of God will overshadow you. Verse 34 to 36. The Holy Spirit, Luke 1, 34 to 36. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. Can I hear an amen? amen? So, you see, we can see here, you know, that the Holy Spirit, you know, releases the power to overshadow. Mm. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, you can be overshadowed to do the impossible. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? The Holy Spirit. So I'm just trying to let you see that the Holy Spirit is not power because a whole lot of people, there are two different things. They seem close or they seem as the same, but they are not the same. Mm -hmm. The whole, every time you see the Holy Spirit is associated with power, but it's not power. Can I hear an amen? Glory yes. to God. Yes. Just like, um, uh, God said in Acts 1 verse 8, he says, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So it's not power that comes upon you, it's the Holy Spirit that comes upon you, but he releases power. That's what I want us to, to see, and I'm glad you're getting it. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, so the, the Holy Spirit is the means through which power flows into our life. Amen. I will also see Jesus in Luke chapter number 4 verse 14. That Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. He returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. And his celebrity status exploded throughout the region. Amen. May your own celebrity celebrity status be, you know, be released in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Once you are empowered, you're going to become a celebrity. You know, your fame will go far beyond, you know, uh, many regions. It will go round about because of the power of the Holy Spirit Amen. in your life. Can I hear you? Amen. So therefore, for you to be able to receive power, you need the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's, that's what we're trying to get at right now. For you to be empowered to do great things, to get more, to accomplish much more, you need the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. And can I hear your amen? amen? I say you need the Holy Spirit in your life. With the, with the power of the Holy Spirit, you can get things done and you can accomplish much more. But you can have the Holy Spirit and not have power flowing in your life. Amen. Oh, I'll say that again. Yes, sir. That's the point I'm making. <laughs> you can have the Holy Spirit and not have power. Because somebody said, you know, when we're talking, they said, oh, why are we, we, I mean, we have the Holy Spirit, so we have power. You can have the Holy Spirit and not have power. For instance, now, if I have a drink, um, uh, and a drink, maybe like, even soda, let me use soda, in a bottle, right? There is soda in the bottle, but if I shake it, if I shake the bottle with the soda, you're going to feel an, a release, a effervescent, or what do they call it? Effervescent. Yeah. <laughs> going to splash everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That thing has the power. The, you, you see a manifestation of something more than the soda. When you're looking at the soda, it's there, but nothing will, it wouldn't activate, activate or release mm. what, you know, can make it overflow. It can overflow, mm -hmm. but it's there. It can, it, in that bottle, it can overfill the bottle, mm -hmm. but it's all there. Until you shake it. 
It's the same way you can have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you and not have the release of the power. Wow. So we're so we're trying to see how the Spirit releases power wow. into our life. Amen. Are you are you flowing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> So Mary, for instance, yeah, he said, you shall conceive as a virgin. The angel told her, this seemingly impossible task is going to happen in your life. But how is it going to happen? He says, the Holy Spirit, the, the, power, the power of the Most High shall what? overshadow you. So you see, you can have power as the Spirit of God you know, in you, or the Spirit of God around you to make the power to overshadow you. So that your surrounding is filled with power. Mm. Can I hear you? Amen. They said, the lion, you know, whenever the lion wants to rest, he unirates around some perimeters. So all the other wild animals, they can smell the urine of the lion. It, that's his domain. So there's a power surrounding him. The urine, the urine is not the lion. But once you come near the surrounding, you know that there's, this is lion territory. So other lion, other animals, they just go away. Hello, somebody. Amen. So you can have the power of God, the spirit of God surround you, releasing a power to surround you. There's a spirit around. There's a spirit that can be upon you, and there's a spirit within you. Amen. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. There's a spirit what? Around. Around you. That's why I said to me, he said, the power of the spirit of God shall come upon you, and the power of the most high what? Shall, shall overshadow you. That means the power of the most high shall what? Surround you for the impossible task you want to accomplish. So you need power to surround you. Hello, somebody. Yes, then you also need the Spirit of God to be upon you. When the Spirit of God is upon you, the power to accomplish some things will also be released into your life. Mm -hmm. When the Spirit is upon you, like Jesus said in Luke 4, 18, Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord, what is upon me, he has anointed me, that means he has empowered me to do what? To preach the gospel to the poor. So the anointing releases the power to make the poor rich. Because when you are preaching the gospel to the poor, you are changing the status of the poor. You are bringing the poor into wealth and riches. And one of the things that is very difficult to do is to make a poor person to be rich. <laughs> it's a very difficult task. <laughs> yeah, it's not, you know, when somebody is poor, is poor because of many reasons. And to take away those reasons to make that person become rich requires a whole lot of power. One of the days, one of these days, I'll preach on why people are poor. Yeah. No matter how, you know, you, how, how good-hearted you are, if you want to make a poor person rich, if you don't have the power, you can be given, that's why I find when a poor man said, I gave you, I'm, <laughs> I gave you, I just gave you 20,000 last week. I'm back. All this way I was in the story, it's gone. I need more. I need more. People think that well, if I have enough money, my problem will be solved. No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, these people say, if I win lottery, mm. that's it. I just need to win one lottery and, and hit some good million. My problem, my financial problem will be solved. Go and check 98% or 95% statistics, real statistics yeah. of people who won lottery. After some certain years, they become, they go back to their state of, in fact, they become poorer than they were before they won the lottery. So it takes power. So it's the power that was on Jesus to make the poor rich. That's why when you come under the power, when you come under the anointing, and the Spirit of God comes upon you, that's why people go to church, you come to church, if you are poor, you can become rich. Amen. Because it's the anointing that breaks the yoke of poverty. Amen. It's an empowerment. Mm -hmm. It has to be upon you for the, 
yoke of poverty. And I prophesy into your life that every yoke of poverty is broken around your life, broken around your family, Amen. broken forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say every yoke of poverty broken over your life, broken over your family. The anointing that breaks the yoke will break that yoke of poverty and your riches will be established and it will pass from you to your children's children in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There is an empowerment. There's an empowerment. Listen to this. Solomon was the king, was the richest king. He handed over to his son 12 kingdoms. In one day, the son lost 11. <laughs> By one foolish decision, yes, sir. he lost 11 because the power was not, not, was not there. Mm -hmm. There was no power upon him to sustain it. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Solomon had a problem before he that he said he was thinking about it. He said, Who knows whether the person that's going to inherit my wealth will be a foolish person? Mm -hmm. And he was right. Mm -hmm. he, he, it, it came to pass easily. <laughs> so there's an empowerment. So when Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he has anointed me, he has empowered me to make the poor. That's why when you see people who come to Christ, who are poor, become very rich, and they become, you know, celebrated. Mm -hmm. And you see here, Amen. the anointing also is what meant the broken hearted. The power, the anointing is the empowerment. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, upon me because he has empowered Empowered me to mend the broken hearted. Do you, how many people know that when something is broken, to mend it is a big task? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it can be mended, but it's a big problem. But the empowerment helps you to mend what is broken. Mm -hmm. Whatever is broken, whether it's your, you know, whether it's your career, your relationship, whether it's your dream, it can be mended when the power is on and it can be restored. And I see whatever is broken in your life being mended in the name of Jesus Christ. I say, may they be mended in the name of Jesus Christ. So there's an empowerment to mend what is broken. Your relationship, broken relationship, broken dreams, they can all be mended through empowerment. Amen. The spirit is upon me. May that, that spirit will be upon you so that it can empower you and bring, you know, the restoration of what is broken. Amen. He also said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to set the captives free. Mm. Yeah. There are people who are in captivity to drugs, to bad habits, addiction. They are, they are in bondage, but they can be free mm. when there is a release of power. Yes, sir. Yeah. They can be free. They can be free from addiction, from bondage. Things that has held them, you know, captive for a long time. Yeah. It just require an empowerment. Yeah. Just require an empowerment. And that power is going to be released in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Yeah. Through the power of God. And he said, it has also, you know, empower me to uh, open the blind eyes. Yes. To preach, you know, recovery to those who are lost. Recovery. Can recover your lost glory, lost opportunity. I'm talking to you about power upon. Power around, power what? Upon. But there's also the power within. Amen. We're talking about empowerment. The, the Spirit of God brings power. The power within, uh, Job 32 verse 8. Job 32 verse 8 says, There is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth him what? Understanding. There is a spirit. So the Holy Spirit in you can release inspirational power. Amen. Inspirational power. Somebody say inspirational power. Inspirational, inspirational power. power is the power for high level performance mm. in life. Once you are inspired in life, you can perform at a higher level. Amen. You can perform what at a higher level. Inspiration means stimulus. Mm. Something that stimulates you. It's a motivation. It's a creative power. It's a catalyst. Mm -hmm. Somebody say catalyst. catalyst. It's like a, it's like a, a kind of brilliance. Mm. You know, it's a you know, it's, it's a brilliance that is it's, 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 it's genius. Mm. Genius power. You know, it's like the genie in the bottle. Something bigger 
Something explosive happens once there's an inspiration. Say, there's a spirit in man to inspire you. You know, inspiration is what keeps you, gets helps you to perspire in life so that you don't retire, but you keep staying on fire yeah. until you acquire all your desires. Mm. Yeah. Amen. The inspiration will keep you, the inspiration will inspire you so that you are what? You, you perspire and you don't retire, but you keep refiring mm. until you acquire everything you desire that inspiration you know keeps you you know gets you to be inspired you know to perspire so that you can refire and not retire until you acquire all your desire may you acquire your dreams Amen. acquire your desires Amen. by the inspiration power may you be motivated yes. but it's the spirit within can i hear you? Amen. Amen. the spirit within the spirit within yes May that power be released in your life. Amen. You know, once you are, you see, once the spirit is upon within you, it will help you to pray. The spirit helps us to pray, helps our prayer. And what does prayer do for you? Prayer, when you pray, God says, Come upon me, I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things. What will make you great and mighty is by the spirit in you leading you to the place of prayer Amen. so that you can have a revelation you can have inspiration mm. from god so that you can do great and mighty things mm. can i prophesy you begin to do great and mighty things in your life i say you begin to do great and mighty things in your life in the mighty name of jesus christ yes so it's very powerful i, I think it was something you know he was confronted by uh, the Philistine and the Bible said the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he, he was so inspired that he took the jawbone of an ass and slew a thousand men with the jawbone of an ass by the inspiration power that came. You know, with, when you are inspired, you can always find solution. You can always find answers to problems because you are stimulated. There's stimulus. You know, you are you are you are motivated. You know. There is creative power once there is inspiration. That's what the Holy Spirit. You, when you are when you when you are filled with the Spirit of God, we're talking about being filled with the Spirit of God. You're going to be inspired to be creative. You're going to have creative power, finding solution. You just look around. You're going to find what to do to solve your problem. May that become your lot and inheritance in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. So how can I be full of the Spirit to release the power of God in my life? How can I be full? Of the spirit, that's what we want to look at now, and we just close. Are you getting blessed? Yes, How can I be full of the spirit? I said you can have, you can be full of the spirit. You can be empty of the spirit. <laughs> you can have the spirit, and the spirit is, you know, not doing anything in your life. Huh. Hello, somebody. Yeah. But to be full of the spirit, number one, give yourself. To much hearing of the word of God. Amen. To be full of the spirit. You need to learn to give yourself to much hearing of the word of God. I'm not saying hearing. I'm saying much hearing of the word of God. You know, Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. The word that what I speak. You have to give yourself to much hearing to be full of the Spirit. The word that I speak, John 6, verse 63. The words that I speak, they are spirit and they give life. Amen. They empower your life. That's what it means. So you have to give yourself to much hearing, to be full of the Spirit so that you can, you know, release the power of God in your life. You have to soak in messages. You know, sometimes you come to church, most of us hear the word of God once. You hear the message preached once. You can't be full of the Spirit when you hear the message once. No, 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 no. You need to hear messages. You have to soak in the message. Hear it again and again until that power is released in you. Yeah. You have to hear the word again, again and again until the power is released. I normally say the first hearing is information. The second hearing is revelation. When you hear it again, oh, this is what it means. Then the third hearing is that will bring transformation. Amen. When you hear the fourth time, it's revolution. Mm. <laughs> Something, the same message. The same message. Yeah. 
So people are not full of the power of the Spirit because it is not steered. It's not activated. The Holy Spirit is in them, but the Spirit works with the Word. The Spirit was moving upon the waters in the beginning. The Spirit was moving, moving, moving upon the waters. And darkness was everywhere. And the Spirit was moving and nothing happened. Until God said, let there be. The word came, then the Spirit was activated. And change began. So there will be change in any life, in any situation. If all you are doing is just, you know, I have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, you have it, but nothing will change. The power will not be released. Until you hear in Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 to 2, it said, Ezekiel chapter 2, the Bible says, And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon your feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me, Karakalakabayaba. When he spake to me, the Spirit entered me. Something entered me when he spake and set me on my feet. And I heard him, I heard him, I heard him that spake unto me. I heard him that spake unto me. When you hear the word of God, the spirit will enter into you and it's going to inflame something in your spirit to accomplish great things. Amen. Yeah, the spirit will enter into you. You know, there's a mystery. Let me explain this thing. You know, in God, you know, people don't understand that. He said, I have the spirit. I'm filled with the spirit. So you have to understand that. We are in him and he's in us. <laughs> and you know, we are we in him, he in us, and us in him. Whichever way. It's a mystery. You say, oh, how, how can I be in him and he in me? But that's how it is. You can have the spirit, but the spirit also will need to come into you. The spirit will be activated in you because that's the, for lack of a better word, when you hear the spirit. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. Let me give you an instance now. Elizabeth was pregnant, the, the, the cousin of Mary, with a child, miracle child, called John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was in her, and there was no reaction. But a day came when Mary, who also has conceived the same miracle conception by an angel. The moment Mary entered Elizabeth's house and spoke to Elizabeth, a reaction began in, inside Elizabeth. Elizabeth began to prophesy, who am I that the mother of my Lord will come to me? And Mary began to say, blessed is she that be. So they began to have communication because the spirit has met with the spirit. So there's a activation of the power. Amen. Is that because when the salutation, mm -hmm. when the salutation came in my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy mm -hmm. because the Holy Spirit is always waiting to hear God's word. He inspires the word. Mm -hmm. Then when he hears the word, you know, there are some music for instance, for lack of a better example, that turns you on. When they play such, you just like, oh, there's some music I be playing. It doesn't make you. So the Holy Spirit, it's turned on mm. when He hears God's word. When you hear God's word in your life, the Spirit in you is activated because now the Spirit is ready to move. Mm. Because you're going to begin to feel the moving of the Spirit. Amen. So that's why you have to hear the word. You know. Um, the more you hear the word, in fact, the Bible says in Mark chapter 4 and verse number 24, to him that hear shall more be given. Are you there? Mark 4, 24. Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you make, it shall be measured unto you. And unto you that hear what shall more be given. What is what to be given to you? More power. The more you hear, the more power you have. Faith comes by hearing. The more you hear, the more, more power. You see, you don't receive the Spirit by the works of the law. We receive the Spirit by hearing of faith. Galatians chapter 3 uh, and verse 2 and I think 5. Galatians 3, 2 and 5. Look at that scripture there. It says, are you, are you getting blessed? Are you here? I'm telling you how to steer the Spirit up. It says, this only will I learn of you. 
Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by what? The hearing of... Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law, or by what? Hearing of faith. Go to verse... We can read, we can read, but we don't go to verse 5. He therefore that what? Ministered to you the Spirit, and worked miracles among you. Does he do it by works of the law, or by what? Hearing of faith. How does miracles happen? Is it when you do works of faith? No. It's when you hear... When you hear something, a miracle will happen in your life. When you hear something, you know, when the more you hear God's word, like you're hearing this message now, something is being steered in you to release the power of God around you to change your life, to get you to get things done and to accomplish great things. The more you hear the word of God, the more the power of God will be steered in you to get things done. And I see that power being said in you in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. You know, in, in uh, Acts chapter 14, and from verse 8 there about to verse 14, you know, um, Acts 14 from verse 8, Paul went to a certain city, you know, to preach. And there was a certain man there who was born, you know, lame from his mother's womb, you know, in Lystra. The man was crippled. Born lame from his mother's womb. Are you there? Mm -hmm. The man sat there at, at, at Lystra, important in his feet, and crippled from what? His mother's womb, who had never walked. He had never walked. From the day he was born, he had never walked. And now he has become a man. Mm -hmm. Can I hear mm -hmm. Then the same head Paul. Speak. Watch now. Power is about to flow. By the hearing of what Paul was saying. And who, Paul began to look at him and saw that power is flowing into his life. You know, when you are hearing the word of God, power will begin to seep into your life. That's why the word of God is very powerful. Amen. Yeah, because it's releasing the spirits to move in your affairs. So for you to be full of power, to be full of the spirit, to activate power, you need to give yourself to much hearing of the word. Amen. Yeah. You see, a whole lot of us in the church, we are into natural things, but many people are not into spiritual things. Amen. Can I give you a secret? Yeah. Are you want to hear the secret? Yes, because many people are not into spiritual things, there are a lot of possibilities available for people who do spiritual wow. things. Amen. You didn't yes, get that. Yes, sir. <laughs> if you find a market mm -hmm. where people don't go and they have lots of goods, you will be a preferred customer. Yes, sir. You'll be getting much more Amen. because people don't go to the market. Right. And you now you come, they will treat you well. Mm -hmm. Because you are the only one now among multitude. Amen. Are you watching? Yes, in the realm of the spirit, there are many people who don't engage spiritual power. Right. So if you begin to engage spiritual power, you will get many more things in your life. Amen. You're going to accomplish much Amen. more. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Especially in this part of the world. <laughs> yes, sir. Because they are carnal. They are not spiritual. So, But when you begin to operate in that realm, and you are doing things, you're going to begin to get more results. In fact, you're going to win God, you're going to win God's heart. Yes, sir. Amen. <laughs> so you, this, God. that's a secret. I hope you caught you it. I got it. <laughs> I will receive it. I will utilize it. <laughs> so you keep hearing the word of God, you're going to do impossible things. Amen. Yeah. You know, when they say this is impossible, say, don't, don't worry, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's some messages I need to hear yeah. in my life. Amen. You know, when preachers do mighty things. Most of preachers who do mighty things, their secret is what I just shared with you. That's our secret. We hear more messages of other preachers who have gone long ago. We hear all those messages. So we are thinking we are, the spirit is moving in many ways. Amen. <laughs> and you are not hearing anything. So there's no, no power released. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so this man, he had Paul preach. Mm. And Paul perceived that he had faith, that the spirit of faith has entered him as Paul was preaching. Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And if you have faith, like a grain of mustard seed, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. You can do mighty things. Yeah. That's why before even Jesus preaches, 
he will teach yeah. to release the spirit. So when people hear faith, when people, if like now, there is no sick person that comes around me. If you come to this church, you are sick. What kind of sickness? Any kind of sickness. If you hear the word, you sit down here, you're going to be healed. If you are poor, you come, you're going to be healed. You're going to be made rich. Amen. If you are depressed, you come, you're going to be, you know, filled uh, with the spirit of God. Something happens when you sit under the word. Amen. Hello, somebody. Yes, sir. So he said he perceived that he had what? Faith. Faith to be healed. <laughs> you know? Then Paul said what? Stand upon your feet. The man that has never walked. <laughs> then what happened? And the man leaped um, and walked. My God. Hmm. What happened? The power has been released. How? Through the hearing of faith. The spirit was released. The power was activated through the hearing. Hmm. And look at them. The Bible says, look at it now. And when the people saw what Paul has done, do you want to do great things? Yes, sir. <laughs> That's how it is. What did Paul do? He spoke the word. They lifted up their voice and said, What? The gods are come down to us in the likeness of us. You want to have God like manifestation, <laughs> God like proof. Give yourself to hear the word of God. Hear the word of God over and over again. Amen. Are you going to see miracles in your life that you never dreamt possible? Amen. Listen to this. The Bible says in Acts 10 44, while Peter was speaking the word, the Holy Ghost fell on all those who heard the word. So, the first way, oh, glory to God, Hallelujah. the first means by which you can be full. Of the spirit and release the power of the Holy Ghost is through hearing. giving yourself to continuous hearing of the word. Amen. You know why faith has come? You have heard too much CNN. Uh, I fear, I beg your pardon, uh, has come because you have heard too much CNN. Unbelief has come because you hear too. You see, once you hear again and again and again, you will soon believe. Yes, sir. Oh, you really yes, have Amen. If you hear God's word, you're going to become a believer. Amen. Are you going to believe many things? Are you going to have many results? Amen. If you hear worldly news, you're going to believe many things. Are you going to fear many things? Yes, sir. Yeah. Many of you never saw Corona with your eyes. It's just the hear, the what you heard. Hallelujah. You never Amen. saw it. Just say, hey, Corona is here. Hey, Corona is here. Hey, Corona. Even you just became paralyzed. Mm. You couldn't move again. You didn't see it. No. But you don't heard it. The same way when you hear God is a healer, God is a deliverer. God. When, you, when they say, God say, what? You're going to bring out your chest. Say, Where is it? Mm. Because what you hear, you manifest. Mm. Are you watching this this yes, morning? Yeah. So, and power will become available for you. Amen. While Peter was speaking the word, the Holy Ghost is falling. Huh. May the Holy Ghost fall upon you. Amen. And the power of God was activated. In that place. Amen. Number two, how can I be filled with the Spirit of God and release the power of God into my life? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Hallelujah. How can I be filled with the Spirit of God and release the power of God into my life? Ephesians 5, verse 17 to 20. We're going to look at it there. I say, Wherefore be not unwise. Don't be unwise. But understand what the will of God is, right? And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. With, be filled with the Spirit. How do you do that? Number one, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. The, so the next thing you can do to be filled with the Spirit is to speak to yourself. Speak psalms to yourself. Speak hymns to yourself. Speak spiritual songs. Speak psalms. Somebody say, speak psalms. Speak psalms. Yeah. Speak psalms. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the enemies came to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will see of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. He shall give His angels charge over me. Lest I dash my foot against us. When you begin to speak Psalms, 
You're going to begin to be filled with the Spirit and power of God will begin to release into Amen. your life situation. Speaking to yourself, to yourself, you know, a whole lot of people speak to themselves. They speak doubt, they speak discouragement, they speak fear, they speak, you know, things that break their heart. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. That's what they speak to themselves. They speak negativity. Amen. You know, you always have self-talk. Yes, sir. What is your self-talk like? Uh -huh. You know, most people, when they have self-talk, they are talking to themselves, but they are talking down on themselves. Look at me now. Yes. Nothing seems to be happening in my life. Absolutely. Everything is not working. Even my dog is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I trust him to have him whining. We are not seem to go right. You know. What kind of thing is that? You're going to now become discouraged, dispirited. Because you are always speaking to yourself. But for you to be filled with the spirit, speak psalms and hymns. I speak, there shall be showers of blessings. This is the promise of God. There shall be seasons refreshing. Sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessings. Showers of blessings we need. Message of strangers are falling. But for the showers we plead, come on now. Shower. Can you feel the spirit now? Hallelujah. Showers of blessings we need. Mercy just round us are falling. For for the showers we plead, there shall be showers of blessings. Send them upon us, O oh Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come and now have that. Your word. Yeah. Showers of blessings. Showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead. You sing him to yourself. Can I hear amen? Amen. Yeah. You sing, you sing him. When you are you you feel like, oh, serving God is like a challenge. Oh, am I doing the right thing? When we walk with the Lord in the light of his world, what a glory he stands on our way. Hey, when we do his good will, he abide with us still. And with all who would trust and obey. Hey, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Amen. Glory be to God. Speak to yourselves. You're going to be filled with the Spirit when you speak some. You know, some people speak negativity. They speak things and wrong stories and, you know, they speak themselves until the spirit has left them. And doctors report. Yeah. <laughs> they don't speak God's word. Amen. They don't speak spiritual. They don't speak to themselves in psalms and hymns and uh, spiritual song. Spiritual song. Mm. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. I say glory be to God. Hallelujah. I say glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Thank you. For I'm, I'm, what? Time being now? The upward way. What? I'm pressing on the upward way, yeah. New heights I'm gaining every day. You see, you have to learn to sing hymns. Spiritual songs, not carnal songs. I love what the Bible says. It qualifies. It's sing what? Spiritual song. Amen. Amen. So it's a spiritual song. Spiritual song. Yeah, there are some songs that are filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves, what psalms and hymns and what spiritual songs, not any kind of song, yes, spiritual songs. God, there are some even songs in the church which people sing which are not spiritual, even though they are church songs. Oh, I know, right? They don't give you the spirit, they rather take away the spirit mm. from you. Praise God. I don't want to call any song, I don't want to. But you get what the Holy Spirit is saying. Amen. Number three. Are you still flowing? Yes, sir. Number three. It says singing. You see that? Singing 
and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Singing. Singing also is a means by which you are filled with the Spirit. Somebody Amen. say singing. 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 Singing means, you know, making, you know, melodious song from your lips. You are singing. From my lips, God has all day praise. I will praise the Lord. You sing. You sing. You know, sing. Sing to the Lord. Amen. Learn to sing. He said he will give you a song mm. to sing. He will, the Lord will give you a song. He will give you a song. So sing. Amen. Hello, somebody. Yes, when you feel, when you want to be filled with the Spirit, feel down, discouraged, sing. Amen. Sing. Begin to sing. Just sing. You're going to, you're going to be filled with the Spirit and power is going to be released Amen. into your life through singing. Yes, through sir. singing. Hallelujah. Amen. When we want to see power even in the church, we sing. Yes, sir. You know, if I begin to sing some song, now you're going to see the power. You are the Lord that he let me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and you heal my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. When you sing songs, you release the spirit and the power will be released in your life to get things done, to accomplish more. Amen. By the songs that you sing, there are songs that release the power and you tell all the song for the kind of power you want to see amen. in your life. Can I hear an amen? amen? Yeah, you sing, learn to sing. Sing. Then number four, is it number four? Uh, uh, number, number four, yeah. Yes. Make melody in your heart to the Lord. You see, singing is out loud. Melody is the tune. You know, uh, the tune. Push it up. You know, you make melody by making what? The singing in your heart. Singing in your heart. Glory be to God. Yeah. You make melody in your heart by, you know, uh, the singing that is in your heart. The, you know, the song is not coming out, but you are, you know, making melodious compositions hmm. to the Lord <laughs> in your heart. You know, and that's why a whole lot of people have, you know, lost their power because rather than making melody in their heart to the Lord, they are beaming out complaints, murmurings, accusations to the Lord. <laughs> but you can't be filled with the Spirit when you are. If God is your helper. You can't be, you know, you can't be quarreling with your helper. Mm -hmm. You have to recognize him as your helper. So you make melody in your heart. In your heart, what are you saying? You know, uh, you know, uh, that woman, that woman kept, the Bible says the woman with the show of blood, she kept saying in her heart, I know this Jesus is a wonderful Jesus. He's a healing Jesus. Amen. If I can touch the hem of his garment, mm. I shall be made whole. Amen. She was talking to God in her heart. Anna began to make melody in her heart, in her heart to God. Say, God, I know you are not my problem. Mm. You are my problem solver. Mm. If you give me a main child, I will give him back to mm. you. You know? She was just talking to God in her heart. In fact, she was so making so much melody, her pastor thought she was drunk. Mm. Hello, somebody. So learn to make melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. Melodies. Sweet melodies. Sweet melodies. Have your own song. Amen. Have your own song in your heart to the Lord. You're going to be filled with the Spirit. Don't forget that God inhabits praises. praises. God inhabits the praises of His people. Amen. Your life will never be void of Amen. power anymore from today. I say Amen. your life will never be void of power anymore. Your Amen. life will be filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. Number, number five. five, it says, are you seeing the verse there? The next verse says in verse 20, Ephesians 5 20 says, Giving yes, thanks, thanks oh. always, right? Yes, For sir. all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks always unto God for all things. What is, giving thanks every time, Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. It looks bad, but Lord, I thank you. I know all things work together for good. I thank you, Father. I worship you. Oh, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I give you praise. I glorify your name. Giving thanks always, giving thanks always, 
Jesus got to the tomb of his friend Lazarus. He had died. He was his close, he was his close friend. And he had died. In fact, Jesus wept. But when Jesus got there, Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I know you hear me always. I give you praise. I give you glory. I thank you. Yes. And the power came and the dead man came back to life. That power was released in the atmosphere by his thanksgiving. Amen. Father, I thank you. Yes, this is I say, oh, the, the guy will be stinking by now. The situation is so bad. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you, Father. I thank you. And the guy came back. Mm -hmm. One day he took people to the wilderness and they were hungry. Three days they've not eaten. They could almost get into a riot. They said, Send them away. Say, I can't send these people away. Give them something to eat. Say, how can we get something to, for them to eat? Say, what do you have? Say, we have only five loaves, but that is not enough. What can we do with insufficiency? We know what to do. Give it to me. Father, I thank you. And the power came, and the loaf began to supernatural yeast began to blow up the, the, the loaves. You know, your money can multiply. Amen. I say your money in your, in your account can multiply. Yes, sir. Your little can become plenty. Amen. The reason, the, the, the way to do it is to give thanks always. Mm. The scarcity in your life can turn to abundance. Amen. When you give God thanks. Yes. When you give God thanks. Thank you, Father. Miracles will happen in your life. Amen. I see miracles happen in Amen. your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. And then finally, mm. how do you get through the Spirit? Prayer. Pray. In Acts 4.31, it says when they had prayed, when they had prayed, when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. You see that? When they had prayed, you pray with your understanding, you pray with the Spirit. You pray when they had prayed. The place was shaking where they were assembled. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spake the word of God with what? Boldness. Then if you look at the next verse, verse 33, the Bible says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When they had prayed, what? Great power. Great power. Don't want to say great power. Great you want great power in your life? Pray. You'll be filled with the Holy Spirit and you're going to see great power at work. Amen. Not only that, the Bible says, look at the next verse. Watch. This is what? The Holy Spirit power is doing. And there was no, no one among them that lacked anything. My God. My God. My God. That lack is coming to an end in your life. Amen. I said that lack is coming to an end in your life. Amen. You will not lack any good thing anymore Amen. in the name of you. There was not any among them that lack. You can end your life. There is power to end lack. Amen. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, there won't be lack in your life. Amen. There won't be a lack around you. You Amen. won't lack testimony. Amen. You won't lack wealth. You won't lack honor. Amen. You won't lack riches. Amen. You won't lack anything that you need. When you have prayed and you are fear with the Holy yes, Spirit. Lord. So the reason why there is lack is because there is no fullness of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, in the, pre when, in the presence of God, there is fullness of everything. everything that we need. When the Spirit of God is, everything is available. He's the one that filleth all in all. May God begin to fill your life. Amen. I say may God begin to fill your life. Amen. Open up your mouth, lift up your hands. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Sing some song. Sing song. Sing spiritual song. You have heard the word of God. Your spirit man is activated. Power has come upon you. Power is flowing into your life right now. Power is released for what you need. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every contrary situation in your life is changing right now. By the power of God that is locating you. Locating you in your home. Locating you in your office. Locating you wherever you are watching from right now. The power of God is coming upon you. The power of God is overshadowing you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Something is beginning to happen right now. Regulate 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 Whatever you couldn't do before, you will do it cheaply. I say you will do it cheaply. Rakata, rekete, 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 rekete. Rakata, rekete, rekete, rekete. Rakato koto koloko. That pain in your body must go now. In the name of Jesus, you are going to be infused with power to do the impossible. If a virgin can conceive. 
and bring forth children. You are going to conceive your dream. And you're going to bring forth miracle, miracle, miracle accomplishment in your life. You're going to, as you con you're going to conceive right now. You're going to be inspired. I see the inspirational power coming upon you. Be inspired. I say be inspired. You will not aspire. I say you will not aspire. Rather you, you, you will refire in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not despire. Oh, no, no. You will be on fire. You will be on fire. Your faith will be on fire. Your desire will be on fire. The power of God will activate fresh fire. Inspirational power. Creativity comes upon you from now in the name of Jesus. Receive power to get power to accomplish things. Say, Father, I thank you. Fill me with the power of God. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and release your power into my life. Say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit afresh and release your power into my life, into my situation. Yes, I get that area of your life where you need the power to flow. Say, Lord, fill me with power right now. Lord, I receive grace to hear your word, to hear this word again and again until something is set loose on the inside of me. Nakata kalakala. Ah, yalagada. Egele. Egele, 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 egele. Take it. Take it. In the name of Jesus. Karakolo kotoro kolo kotoro. Power to get power, 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 Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost power. Thank you, Father. Every sickness is judged right now. Every sickness, every sickness, small, little, and great. All sickness leaves you right now in the name of Jesus. Sickness go. I command sickness go. I command disease to go. In the name of Jesus, I command sickness to go. I command disease to leave your body. In the name of Jesus Christ, be free, be healed. In the mighty name of Jesus, we terminate lack. We terminate lack in your life. Every lack ends. Lack of ideas, lack of joy, lack of wisdom. It ends right now in the name of Jesus. Lack go. We command lack to go. There was none among them that lacked. No more lack in your life. We call in abundance. We call in abundance. We call in abundance of creativity. Abundance of favor. Abundance of solution. Power comes into your life. From this moment. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Why not sing anointing, anointing fall on me. To me, I don't know whether you are here, you're on Zoom, you're watching anywhere, but there is somebody, the spirit of discouragement was setting into your life. But God is telling me to tell you that you are a new inspiration is coming Amen. into your heart right now. The Holy Spirit is filling you. Every spirit of discouragement must leave you right now. It's time for you to be refired. I feel the fire of God wants to fall upon you and I think there are two or three people or four God is talking to right now but if you want that fresh fire because when the fire comes yes it's going to burn out every discovery wherever you are I want you to stretch your hands towards me lift up your hand to heaven and say Lord I want this fire I want the Holy Ghost fire fire me up oh God fire me up oh God open up your mouth scream with your loudest voice and say Lord I want fresh fire fire of the Holy Ghost fire Fire me up, O God. That devil is a liar. Fire, fire, Holy Ghost, fire. 
Yes, 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 yes. Turn it upon you right there in your home, right here in the church. Fresh fire, rekete. Take it, fire, fire, fire. Fire, I say, kaya bala mama seke leketa. Leke, 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 teke, leke, te. Raka teke, leke, teke, teke, te. Zaka laka teke, leke, te. Be stimulated right now. Be motivated right now. Shaka toko loko toko loko to. Zika ta kara kalaka ta. Take the fire of God. Take. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Kolobo Shakabala. Hey, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Father. Yeah, there is one person who has been dealing with impossible situations. It's like you are. This is an impossible task. Yeah. It's like this seems impossible, you know. How shall this be? Seeing I know no man. You seem like you are helpless, you never know how this is gonna be. But it says the Holy Ghost will come upon you and the power of the most high shall overshadow you. I don't know who I'm talking to. Can you let me check on if you are the person that received the first fire? If you got something on Zoom, let me know. If you if you are here, stand and let me know. I want to know, you know, if God is with us because we don't serve a dead God. You know, I want to I want to be able to pray right now. I want to pray for you. Maybe it's on Zoom, maybe here. I want to pray for you. Maybe somebody's watching on social media. I want to pray for you right now. I want to pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Lord, I give you praise. Yeah, how shall this be? It's like an impossible scenario, but the power of God will overshadow you. I don't know who you are. If, if I get a witness in the, I can pray. Somebody dealing with an impossible situation. It seems as if it is impossible, but God says with him. All things are possible. Let, let me see your hand. I want to pray for you. Maybe I'm just feeling that in my spirit. Father, Lord, that impossible situation in the life of that person, we command it to go. We command it to go. We command it to become possible. Let the power of the Most High overshadow you. Amen. Yeah, that power of God will overshadow you right now in the name of Jesus. And that which shall or what seems impossible shall become impossible. I am going to know that this is a God that has spoken to you Amen. today and has brought it to pass Thank in the name of Jesus God. Christ. Let us hear your testimony in when it is made man manifest in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you Father. Oh, my give you praise. Yes. Sarah said, we will have said, we will have said, we will have said. That thing is becoming a possibility for Amen. you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Yes, before we go today, I want to pray for somebody. You have not given your heart to the Lord. You want to be born again. The word of God said, except a person is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn you. He came so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. If, the, if you shall call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So right now, I want you to say, Lord, today I call upon your name. Jesus, I call upon your name. I ask that you save me. Please save me. Say it. Say, please save me. I'm a sinner, but I ask you to forgive me my sin. Come into my life. Give me a new beginning. Empower me right now to become a child of God. That's the greatest status anybody can have. Say, Lord, empower me to become your child right now. Say, I confess that I believe you died for me, that you rose again on the third day for my justification. So today, I surrender my life to you from this moment. I become your child. Thank Amen. you for being my father. You said he who comes to you. Say, say, you said, oh God, anyone who comes to you, you will not turn away. I have come today, so I know you are not turning me away. Amen. I feel you embracing me. Thank you for saving me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, Lord, thank you for that person right now, that person, this person right now watching who has just given his life to you. I pray that this person's sins are forgiven. Amen. I pray that this person's name is written in the book of life. Yeah. I pray that I give this person the grace to live for you and to serve you Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you yes, and we Lord. call it done Amen. in Jesus' Amen. mighty name. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Let's give our, the Lord a big clap of faith for our new family member in the kingdom of God. If you said that prayer, please let me know you said that prayer. Can you please email me? Um, e email me info at hoffa.org info at hoffa.org Amen. That's info at h-o-f-f-a-n dot o-r-g That's Amen. h as in holy o as in omega, f as in faith f as in faith, a as in alpha and n as in new 
dot org let me hear from you let me know that prayer i'm going to send some materials to you that will help you in your work with god and i'm also going to commit to praying for you if you look at the top or bottom of this broadcast you're going to see that email address let me hear from you if you said that prayer glory be to god amen and anywhere you are in the world i can you know i'll make a commitment to help you to walk side by side with you in your work with god to grow and to know god Anywhere you are in the world, that's my commitment to you. If you email me and let me hear from you, or if you want to text me, you can just text the word LOVE, L-O-V-E, to 678-940-6080. One more time, the word, text the word LOVE, L-O-V-E, to 678-940-6080. I can't wait to connect with you, and great things await you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Are we happy, church? Yes, sir. Give the Lord another big, big clap offering. Power! It's power. It's always power. 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 Power to get. Power to accomplish great things. Now you know how to steer up the power of God and to release it into your life. To steer up the Holy Spirit to move in your life. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I say hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right. Before we go today let's do one more important thing let's give god a good offering today the bible says we should honor the lord with our substance and with the first fruit of all our increase so when we give to god we are honoring god we are, we are acknowledging that god is the source of our total supply we honor god by paying our tithe your tithe is 10 percent of your income it is holy and set apart to god in leviticus 27 it says all the tithes are holy unto the Lord. All the tithes are holy unto the Lord. And it said in Malachi 3.10, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me. Now here we said a lot of us, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive. The only time God said we should prove him is when we pay our tithes and he will show himself faithful. He will open the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing, give you ideas and creativity. Amen. So you can give your offering anywhere you are in the world. Um, if you go to our website, offer.org, H-O-F-F-A-N.org, favorite that website on your, uh, what do they call it now? Uh, on your browser, praise God. Yeah, favorite on your browser, so that, you know, it's all there, you can always find it. It's H-O-F-F-A-N.org. You know, click the give button, follow the prompt, and then give, pay your tithe. As we're taking just one offering today, but make it a good offering. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. By one offering, it's going to perfect everything that pertains to you. Make it a very good offering. Praise God. Amen. So, uh, your tithe, of course, your tithe, and then your offering, your worship offering. So, I'm going to pray for everything together, both the tithe, and pray for the tithe. We're going to take because, you know, some of you are in your house, so... Note it, this is my tithe and then this is my worship offering also in the house. So let's start on our feet with our offerings. Praise God. You can give by cash app, uh, 678-294-6494. You can give by text to give, uh, 770-659-7713. You can also give by Zelle, 678-294-6494. Or you can give by PayPal. Just go to the website, howfound.org. All means for us to give. God is blessing us. All tithes, please lift up your tithe. Father, we thank you for everyone paying tithe today. We ask according to your word that you open the windows of heaven, pour out blessings into the life of everyone paying tithe, that there will not be room enough to receive it. Rebuild the devourer for us for their sakes, O oh God, and let them become a delightsome land. Let harvest meet harvest in their lives in the name of Jesus. For every one of us giving an offering according to your word, you say when we give, it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, will you cause men to give to our bosom? We thank you, Father, we give you praise, and we call it done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.